We now have some background to take up the momentous question of who shot President Kennedy. This question is easier to answer than you might think. Spotlight Magazine published an article citing a memo written by this man, former CIA Director Richard Helms, which places this man, an admitted CIA assassin, in Dallas on the day that Kennedy was murdered. The memo says, Hunt was in Dallas the day the President was murdered and was involved in the conspiracy to kill Kennedy. Hunt sued Spotlight Magazine for slander and had his day in court. Hunt's explanation of where he was on the day that Kennedy was murdered was a disaster of impossible lies. Over the years, Hunt has given five different explanations of where he was on the day that Kennedy was murdered, and the jury found him guilty of the President's murder when they found the magazine innocent of slander. There is at least one story from this trial that should be told. During the trial, former head of CIA Richard Helms testified that Marita Lorenz was a CIA agent known to him and working for them. Her role in a CIA plot to assassinate Castro was the plot of a movie. During the court proceedings, Ms. Lorenz testified that she was part of the CIA's Operation 40, which carried out terrorist raids against Cuba from 1960 to 1963. During November of 1963, she was working with this man, CIA operative Frank Sturgis. She testified that one day Sturgis came and told her to pack her bags that they were going on a mission. A short time later, she drove to Dallas with Sturgis in two station wagons full of men and guns. There was a knock at the door, and E. Howard Hunt came in and began passing out maps and money. This was clearly shaping up as an attack not upon Cuba, but upon Americans on American soil. Lorenz told Sturgis, I'm getting the hell out of here, and took a cab to the airport and flew back to Miami. The next day, President Kennedy was murdered. Sturgis returned later, saying, You should have been there. We made history. You missed the really big one. We killed the president. Again, after listening to all the testimony in the trial, the jury found that Spotlight Magazine did not slander Hunt when Spotlight printed an article saying that Hunt had murdered John Kennedy. But Hunt did not have the ability to steal the body from the Dallas coroner, or to steal it again from the Secret Service, and remove it from its coffin, and mutilate it, and then return it without attracting public attention, and he didn't have the ability the to get all of the media to lie about it for the next 40 years. That those theories are wrong. The theft of the body, for example, could only have been carried out by the most powerful devils in the world. Devils so powerful we would recognize their names if we heard them. Can we connect Hunt to any major league devils? Former President Richard Nixon might be a good place to start. Even though he's not generally regarded as an expert in handling guns, he is generally regarded as one of the most evil people to ever occupy the White House. And it's not a secret. Everybody knows. You, the jury of the damned, Benedict Arnold, Lizzie Borden, Richard Nixon. But I'm not dead yet. In fact, I just wrote an article for Red Book. Hey, listen, I did a favor for you. Yes, master. Richard Nixon chose E. Howard Hunt to lead his private White House goon squad, the so-called Plumbers Unit. Hunt became famous as the head of the Watergate burglars, but after his arrest for breaking into the Watergate Hotel, while he was sitting in jail, Hunt suddenly began sending messages to Nixon that he needed a million dollars to keep his mouth shut. At the same time, Hunt started talking to reporters, saying that he was a CIA assassin. To the thousands of people who believed that the CIA had killed Kennedy, this was earth-shaking news. Hunt was threatening to tell about the Kennedy assassination if Nixon didn't get him the hell out of jail and get him a million dollars. He called up the FBI and told them they had to stop investigating Hunt's activities in Mexico. He said the FBI investigation would threaten to uncover the whole Bay of Pigs thing. The whole Bay of Pigs thing? What is that supposed to mean? Bob Haldeman was Nixon's chief of staff and closest advisor. Haldeman says, It seems that in all those references to the Bay of Pigs, he was actually referring to the Kennedy assassination. Nixon was forced to resign based upon the single charge that he tried to stop the FBI from investigating Hunt. 
But why should Nixon care what Hunt said or what the FBI found out about the Kennedy assassination? Unless he was involved. Was Nixon involved in the Kennedy assassination? One of the most stunning revelations about Nixon to be uncovered recently is this little gem. It seems that Jack Ruby, the mafia thug who shot Oswald, who was spotted by a Dallas reporter in the Parkland Hospital in the area where the magic bullet was found on the wrong stretcher, was working for Congressman Richard Nixon in 1947. Nixon admits that he was in Dallas the day that Kennedy was murdered. So what? So what is that? It's almost become a cliche to say it, but you know everybody remembers where they were when the assassination took place. The country changed, their lives changed, and nothing would ever be the same. Well, almost everybody remembers. It seems that Nixon, like Hunt, can't remember what he was doing on the day that Kennedy was murdered. You see, in 1964, he told Reader's Digest, I boarded a plane from Dallas to New York. I hailed a cab. We were just waiting for the light to change when a man ran over from the street corner and said that the president had just been shot in Dallas. This is the way I heard the news. However, exactly nine years later, he told Esquire magazine, on arrival in New York, we caught a cab and headed for the city. A woman came out of her house screaming and crying. She told us that John Kennedy had just been shot in Dallas. Why does Nixon remember two different versions of how he found out that Kennedy was dead? Perhaps, like Hunt, he can't tell the truth about where he was and what he was doing. But Nixon wasn't a powerful devil in 1963. In fact, he had quit politics completely after losing the election in 1960 to Kennedy and then losing the election for governor in California in 62. But it is clear that he had a close relationship with another suspect in this case. As president, he shocked political observers by bringing in a Democrat to be his Secretary of the Treasury, the Texas Democrat who was sitting in front of Kennedy when his brains were blown out who held Kennedy's hand and pretended that nothing was going on as he led him into the killing zone. John Connolly, the Democratic governor of Texas. It's important to remember that these guys are really just small-time devils, and we need a little bit of historical background on the really big devils before going on. America is home to some of the most brutally vicious, racist monsters in all of history. American slave owners invented state-sponsored racism and the wars of extermination against the first Americans killed a higher percentage of their race than Hitler's attempt to exterminate the Jews. It should come as no surprise then that the most powerful families in this country, the Fords, the Harrimans, and especially the Rockefellers, supported racism and genocide and Hitler from the very beginning. This is J. Edgar Hoover, the head of the FBI for nearly 40 years, he has recently been criticized for being gay and a cross-dresser. He has been criticized for a long time for being a racist, but you have to admire his skills as an investigator. Hoover investigated the Nazi connections of all these people and brought actions against them. For example, Hoover investigated the Nazi connections of Union Bank of New York, and in 1942, the year the U.S. entered the war, the bank was seized as a Nazi asset. Prescott Bush, the president's grandfather, was a director and chief executive officer of that bank. And when the U.S. government grabbed the bank, he protested. He said, wait a minute, that's my bank. Hoover said, that's right, no mistake, you're a Nazi, you run a Nazi bank. So Hoover knew that Prescott Bush was a Nazi. This is going to be extremely important later, so please make a note to yourself. Hoover knew that the Bushes were Nazis. But let's get back to this guy, Prescott Bush, the president's grandfather. He was a co-director of this Nazi bank with this Nazi, Averill Harriman, his boss. Prescott Bush was also a full partner in Brown Brothers Harriman. They were the closest of business associates. Remember the trial of E. Howard Hunt, where the jury found Hunt guilty of the murder of President Kennedy? During this trial, Hunt testified that immediately after World War II, he was in Paris working directly for Averill Harriman, reporting directly on a daily basis to his boss. So the Bushes run around in a tight circle that includes other Nazis and Kennedy killers, a truly 